God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. The reason we have this day is because of you, and we're so thankful we get to spend it in your house, God. On your day, on Sunday, Lord. God, we're grateful for what you're doing today. God, I ask that you would speak through me. God, I open myself to you, Lord, that you would have your way through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. He's faithful. Pastor would be so proud at all these testimonies. I don't know if this is recorded or not, but thank you, Pastor, for asking me just a few hours ago to preach. But you know what? Even though I had a limited amount of time, he's faithful. His word is true. No matter how long you get to study on it, his word is true. Amen. And on this day, Christmas Day, we, we celebrate his birth, his coming to earth for the first time. But the story's not over. He is coming again. There's something else to the story. It doesn't stop there. And what the Lord revealed to me as I was sitting there, that only the few back then that was looking for him, that loved his appearing, that was waiting for him, were the ones that got to see God manifest in the flesh, face to face. And the same goes for when he comes back again. It's those that are seeking his face and loving his appearing, waiting and watching and desiring to see him again. Those are the ones that are going to be caught up with him and see him face to face. None of that is in my notes today, but it really just hit me. It hit me. It's going to happen again. But this time he's not coming as a baby. He's coming as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to take his bride away. I'm looking forward to that day. I love his appearing. I desire his appearing. As the world gets worse and worse, it looks better and better. It looks better and better. We get to see him face to face. The one who put you on this earth. The one who called you. The one who anointed you. You get to see him face to face. None of that is in my notes. (laughs) All that is free. (laughs) Merry Christmas. That is my gift to you. (laughs) Hallelujah. As I was studying for this message, I didn't have a title to begin with. It just literally says Christmas message with the date on it. But before I got here, the Lord gave me a message entitled, The One Who Gave Himself for Us. On Christmas, we give gifts. We make lists. We hope to get that one gift. We hope for it so bad. I'm even wearing one of the gifts I hope for, my brand new boots. (laughs) And when we get them, we're so happy. But I'm here to tell you today that God gives the the best gifts. Is there another microphone? Yes, there's several. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank thank you. Better? All right. Thank you, Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 9, we've already heard this verse, but I'm going to read it again. In verse 6, it says this. For unto us. Unto us. It's personal. It's like as if God is saying, unto you and you, a child is born. And unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Has he been wonderful to you? Counselor. Has he counseled you in your darkest of times? The mighty God. That means he's the warrior, the one that will fight for you. When it feels like there's no way you can understand which way is up, he'll fight for you. Be still and know the mighty God. How has he been that for you? The everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus. The Prince of Peace. Has he been your peace when you had questions, when you were struggling, when you were anxious, depressed? Has he been your peace? He gave himself for us. That is the ultimate gift. He gives the best gifts. And like my sister said, our grandmother is here today. And that is a good, amazing gift. Return all the other presents I got. That was what I wanted for Christmas. 
God gives the best gifts. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if we fast forward into the New Testament, in John chapter 3, sorry, brother. John chapter 3, we can all quote it. I've known this since I was born. But here it says, For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, no if, ands, or buts about it, no exceptions, right. no fine print. Whosoever yes. Yes. believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. He gave himself. We talk about this all the time. We talk about it every year. But it really hit me with magnitude that he knew the heart of man and he still came to earth right. to save us. Roped himself in flesh to save us. Hallelujah. I'll wait till for my next verse. <laughs> he wrapped himself in flesh for us. He didn't have to do that. Without the birth, there was no death, and there was no there would be no resurrection, and then there would be no rapture. This was the beginning of the story when he came to earth as a baby. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. John chapter one. Starting at verse 1, backing up a couple chapters. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. It sounds a little repetitive in this passage, but he's saying that God was the Word, and the Word was God. Yep. And then in verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him... Not anything made that, not, <laughs> excuse me, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He created everything. Right. Amen. He spoke a word, and this world came into existence. Yes. Right. He was there before the world was even formed. That's right. The Amen. word of God. Hallelujah. Verse 4, in him was life, and life was the light of men. In verse 5, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He came into this world, and the finite minds of all those that thought they knew how he would come. Maybe they thought he would come as a king or a conqueror. They thought they understood exactly how it was going to go, but they were wrong. He came as a baby, and the darkness couldn't comprehend it. Those in the world couldn't comprehend it. It was those that were seeking his face that got to see him. Yes, amen. They got to know. They got to see him in the flesh. God in the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Skipping to verse 14 in John, the first chapter. John 1 and 14. Thank you, brother. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He wow. gave himself to be with us. Wow. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It's so hard to think about God coming to earth as a man. A lot of people like to talk about the three in one, but as I see, it's the one in three. Yeah. God as the Son, God as the Holy Ghost, and God as the Spirit. He was all of them. He wrapped himself in flesh. Woo. To come for us. He knew exactly how we would mess up. He knew yeah, exactly yeah. every wrong turn we would make. Yeah. Every wrong step that we make. But he still came to earth for us. For you. Yeah. Through every bad decision. Through every wrong turn. He knew exactly what you would do. But he still said, you know what? If you were the only one here on yeah. earth, I would do it again. Thank I you. did it for you. Thank Yes, it's a collective. He came here for us, but it's specific to you. Amen. You're part of the us in that group. In the Old Testament, 700 years before Jesus was born, it was prophesied of what his name would be. In Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. God likes to give signs. Yes. He likes to tell us about what's about to happen mm -hmm. before it comes to pass. It says right here, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel literally means God with 
us. Yes. He came to earth to dwell with us messed up humans. He came to earth so that he could grow to be a man and to minister and then to die for all of us. Yes, my God. Oh, that's a story worth telling. Yes, man. Thank you, Jesus. Last Sunday, I preached a message entitled, Go Tell It on a Mountain. What is your it yes, that God has right. done for you? God has done so many things, and my salvation was just the beginning. God has kept his hand on me my entire life. Yes. What is that it he has done for you? Thank you. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God with us. And going back forward into the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, yes. and thou shalt call his name Jesus. The name above all names. Yes, yes. my God. No other name can anyone be saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Verse 22. And now, with all this done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying... Here it is again. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. The name Jesus means Jehovah has become salvation. He could have said, you know what? These humans are too messed up. I'm done with them. Let's just start over with a fresh new batch. But he came to earth robed in flesh, to be born as a child, to grow up, and then to die, and then to be resurrected again. He's not on that cross any longer, church. He's alive, and he's well, and he's living inside of me, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am an overcomer because of him. By his blood, by his stripes, I am healed. He's done the things. It's over. It's accomplished. Hallelujah. He is everything, Diane. Yes. Everything that you need. That's why his name is also I am. Yes. I am healing. Yes. I am victory. Yes. I am deliverance. Yes. I am peace. Yes. I am comfort. Yes. Everything you need, I am. Yes. My God. My God. He's everything yes. to me. Hallelujah. My God. Ooh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Yes. Mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. In Luke chapter 1, as I was reading the Christmas story, something really reverberated within my spirit. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 28, we get to learn a little bit about Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. We see something about Mary that nobody else had. She was highly favored. Yes. God trusts those that are highly favored Woo. in his eyes. Amen. He trusted her with a task. And those of us that are highly favored and following his word and following where he's leading are highly favored. And he has a task. Uh -huh. Yes. He trusted her with a special task that no one else could accomplish but her. She bare and bore the Son of God miraculously. Yep. That's right. Amen. I like to think about when she went to go visit her cousin Mary. And when she said, when she greeted her cousin, she said that John the Baptist that was in her womb leapt. Is the, is the Holy Ghost within you resonating with other those and the Holy Ghost feeling? Let me start over. I <laughs> lost where I was going. <laughs> Elizabeth felt the presence of God when Mary walked into the room. Are others feeling the presence of God when you walk into the room? Are you a living witness of Jesus himself who is living within you? The power that he's placed within you. The glory that is resting upon your shoulders. Are you carrying that weight of who he is? Do others recognize him when you're around? All right now. All right now. The one who gave himself for you. Yes, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Her task was found in verse 35 of this chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the angel said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. 
Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. This whole thing came to pass from the very beginning by the Holy Ghost. The revelations came to pass by conception of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was there before the earth was formed. He was there when the Lord was coming to earth and he's still here now and there's no stopping him. He will do what he's come to do if you just allow him. The revelations were conceived of the Holy Ghost. She carried the embodiment of God within her womb. Can you even think about it, all those all women who've had babies? Your baby's special, but can you imagine carrying God manifest in the flesh? It's a big deal. She was chosen for that. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. Starting in verse 14, it says this, In whom we have redemption through his blood, Jesus. Even the forgiveness of sins, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created in heaven. By God, he created all things. And and that are in earth visible and invisible, yes, right. whether they be thrones yeah. or dominions right or principalities or powers. Yes. All things yes. were yes. created by him yes. and for him. Yes. Let me blow your mind here for a minute. Yes. It says all things. That devil that's been bothering you, God created that yes, devil. He did. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he allowed him to come after you because he was doing an experiment on you. Yes. How are you going to react to this situation? Well. He wanted to see how you would do. A lot of times in the Bible, the word trial is interpreted and translated to experiment. He wants to see how you're going to respond to each and every situation that comes your way. All things were created by him and for him. Verse 17, and he is before all things and by him all things Consist. Yes. I'm going to sound like pastor here for a second, yes. but consist literally means being held together. Yes, my God. All things are being held together by him. When your world feels like you're crumbling and falling apart, he's holding you together. Yes. He's not going to stop holding yes. you together. Just trust him and follow his voice. He will get you through no matter what it may feel like, no matter what it may look like. He's holding you together at this very very moment. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's by his grace yes. God. that we are here. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 And then let's skip over to verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, the reason that he came, yeah, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. All things. Yes. No fine print. Yeah, that's right. No ifs, ands, or buts. Amen. All things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be in earth or in things in heaven. Amen. Brother Nate, would you come? He came for you. I was raised in church since I was born. I know the Christmas story like the back of my hand. I can quote it. But when you stop to really think about what God did for you, coming to earth as a man, showing himself who he is, it just blows my mind. Amen. The one who spoke the world into existence. He came. He didn't have to do it, but he chose to do it. Yes. Yes, he did. Because he loved the world that he gave. Revelation 1 and 8. The back of the book. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. I am Alpha and Omega. That is the first letter of the Greek alphabet and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the end. He's beyond time and space. Yes, that's right. Saith that's the right. Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty. He's everything from A to Z and everything in between. He's beyond all time and space. He was there when he spoke the world into existence. He was there again in flesh when he was born. And he died and rose again. And he's here today living within, within us. And he's coming back one day. He's coming back one day and I'm excited. 
Hallelujah. Almighty here in the Greek means all ruling, sovereign, omnipotent. How is he those things to you? Let's all stand together. I am blessed to come to church on Christmas Day. Yes. A lot of times we come to church or think about service on Christmas Day, we think it's going to be boring or staunch and starchy or how early it is. Luckily, we have afternoon church here. But God stepped in the door today. He came in. I felt him in the prayer room. He had something to do today. I'm blessed to be here today, aren't you? Yeah. I'm blessed to celebrate this Christmas day with you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray before we dismiss. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you've done for us way back on that day. I thank you for what you're doing for us now. And God, I thank you for what you're about to do. God, as we step forward into this next year, this next vision that you're placing upon this church, God, that your hand would be upon it in every single way. And God, that we would open ourselves to you. We would deny our flesh, God, and allow you to work through us, God, that so that you can speak, so that you can move and perform more miracles, God, within this body. Lord, we give our all to you because you gave yourself for us, God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.